Hey you guys, welcome back to Drawing with Michael, uh, Michael Claire to Arts. So uh, today I'm going to be doing a short, <laughs> I always say short, it ends up going really long, um, video review of a product that uh, came into my life uh, through some interesting circumstances. Um, not going to get into that, but the uh, product is uh, the Lenovo Yoga Book uh, 920. Um, this particular configuration is the i7 processor with the uh, 8550 uh, U processor. <clears throat> I think 2019, 2018, 2019 is when that processor was being used pretty predominantly. We're up to, the, I think, 10th generation um, i5 and i7, and it's going on, I believe, in the next uh, iteration of the Surface Book uh, or Surface Pro, they're going to have uh, possibly 11th generation. But this particular computer has uh, a base uh, configuration, 1.8 gigahertz. I think it turbo boosts up to 4.5 or 4.3, somewhere around there. 256 gigs of RAM. <clears throat> uh, the display is a 13.9. They marketed it as a 14. So I think it's 14 diagonally. So it's gonna be kind of a letterbox, um, you know, 16.9 aspect ratio. Uh, and uh, it's running uh, Windows uh, 10 Home. Awesome. What's really different um, about the Yoga Book than other two-in-ones? This is, of course, part of that huge wave of computers that has hit our market in the past four to five years that really combines the uh, portability of uh, a tablet and it crams all of the high-end processors uh, in there so it can also uh, have the capability of a really powerful laptop. You guys that have been on my channel before know that I've had numerous devices, uh, two-in-ones, and I've been searching high and low for that one two-in-one that will take care of all of my needs. And uh, of course, you know, that is one of those, you know, far out uh, things that, you know, I, I, I fish for, or I shoot for, but a lot of times, you know, you read the feedback, you read a lot of the things, but the practical uh, execution of what I want to do on the machine doesn't always turn out as uh, as I had wished. You know, I've had Surface uh, Book 2, or not Surface Book, I've had Surface Pro 2, Surface Pro 3, Surface Pro 5, Surface Pro 7. And each generation of that particular machine has gotten better and better. The form factor hasn't changed, and, you know, I don't know how I feel about that. I think that they could, you know, put a really high-definition screen in there. Um, and I've had a Surface Book that had, had a really high-definition screen, and I think I had the 13.3 version of that. And it was a great, all of those machines <clears throat> are wonderful. Let me iterate to you that in this world of all-in-ones, you know, comparing one machine to another, when a lot of the internals are the same, you're gonna get a lot of the same results, right? So the Surface, you know, running Windows Inc. with Intrig, well, Microsoft PIM protocol, really, you know, whenever you start getting into like the Dell machines, the HP machines, and, and some of those other iterations, you're, you're, you're running the same software, you're running the same hardware, and what these like HP and Dell does, and even Lenovo for that matter, they put their stamp on it, you know, they want to put their feel of it, you know, their shell. And Yoga or, or uh, Lenovo is no different. So um, a while back I did have the um, Dell 7553 that had the 4K screen and it had this particular processor in it and it had I think 16 gigs of RAM and you could upgrade it which was absolutely wonderful I mean I literally and that was a 15.5 inch machine I thought that machine was going to be everything that I needed because it had dedicated graphics it had integrated graphics it had 4K screen it had 500 you know plus uh, gigabytes of storage uh, you know, it had a 15.5 inch screen. It, it, it had the active technology, which is supposed to be really good. The Dell active pen. <clears throat> and I started drawing on it. And what I'd come to find out is, unfortunately it was missing one of the main things that I needed, which was um, pressure curve uh, modification software. I couldn't modify the pressure curve. And I started getting into it and drawing with it and starting out having issues with the pen because the pen was only set at one pressure. and it was blowing out things and it was just causing an issue and I ended up buying another pen of course why not you know spend more money 
and I bought the Wacom Bamboo and I did a review of that and that ended up being actually worse. So <clears throat> this machine, um, believe it or not, I, I've done some drawing, preliminary drawing on it because I didn't want to get in here, you know, whenever I was doing the review and start getting angry <laughs> because you guys are so sensitive to frustration and, and you know, I, I'm one that I want the machine to work as advertised, right? So, you know, whenever you buy a PC, whether it's a Lenovo Yoga 920, 720, whatever it is, HP, whenever you first start it up, whenever you first get into the machine, you run into all these little things that you kind of have to modify, uh, whether it's updated drivers, whether it's <clears throat> restart, whether it's updates, you know, all the software that needs to be updated on these PC machines. And that's kind of across the board. And that's what I did in the past 24 hours. I updated everything. I moved things around. I set things up so they wouldn't uh, inhibit my creativity on the machine. And I have a little bit of knowledge when it comes to PCs. I have a lot more knowledge when it comes to Macs. Um, you know, and this machine, this particular machine, really, I think is, oh, it's so close, guys. I, I can't even, how do I put it? So I started drawing on it, right? And it and it came with the Lenovo uh, Active Pen 2, which is supposed to be the next generation of the Lenovo Pen. I don't know if they have a new version. I probably should look on the website. Uh, and this has 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity. It's got two programmable buttons, and it comes with pressure curve software that you can modify the pressure curve, which is awesome. It also comes with uh, this little button right here, similar to Windows Ink, where you can launch things and you can set up uh, preliminary um, little actions uh, for the button. And I haven't done that. So the yoga, I'm not gonna get into the unboxing, but you know, as you can see um, through some of the short video that I've shot, um, that the machine itself is beautiful. It's, it's got this bronze color and they did come with different finishes <clears throat> and the bronze color and the finish is wonderful. I'm not sure if it's aluminum or magnesium, but just through me having the machine over the past couple, uh, you know, 24 hours, the casing of it isn't as thick as what you would think. And I've noticed a couple little instances where the metal's been depressed a little bit. It doesn't hurt the internals, but you know, in terms of fit and finish, you, you pay $2,000 for a machine and you want it to last. You know, whenever I had my Surface Book, it was a tank and it was lightweight, it was magnesium. And to dent that thing, you really had to knock the crap out of it. This, however, this is really thin. You can see the bronze color, it's real beautiful. You can see it. Uh, yeah, there we go. But what was very interesting about this machine too, is this hinge. This is a, obviously a design cue that the designers over at Lenovo were like, yeah, you know, so-and-so came out with a really killer hinge. We can do the same. And that's what that is. This is an exercise in design cues and, you know, to give it a better, a higher quality fit and finish. How does it perform? So, um, I'm going to go through because I, I didn't, I didn't want this to be a technical review. You know, me, this channel, I buy the machine or I get the machine or somebody sends me a machine, a machine and I am on, the only thing I'm going to do on the machine is draw. Okay. You know, you might say, well, you might watch some videos occasionally. Yeah, but that's, I can do that on my phone. I can do that on my iPad, you know, 12.9. I can do that on other machines. The only reason this machine exists in my life is one function drawing. How does she drive? How does it, how does it draw? Um, so we're going to go through the technical specs. I already did that. It's got the i7 with the 8550U, um, with eight gigs of RAM. So originally, you know, whenever I started looking around for a machine before this one came to me, I, my, one of my main concerns was the RAM. So I have a Surface Book, or I'm sorry, a Surface Pro, uh, seven, eight gigs of RAM, Surface Pro five, four gigs of RAM. And then the, and the difference in those machines is massive. Of, of course, the seven is, you know, two generations newer. It's got the newer processors, but you know, with a couple of adjustments, I was able to get the five performing very well. And you know, the seven does have its issues uh, with that new graphics card that they put in there. They've had some challenges with the pin function. They've had some challenges with um, just overall uh, functionality of the machine itself. And 
I caught myself going back to the five over and over again. And finally I tuned the five and I say tuned because I changed the virtual memory. I jacked that up. I, I got rid of some, you know, the one drive. I, I, you know, did a couple other things that basically helped the machine perform better. <clears throat> and now it runs Photoshop very well. And with the, um, with Raphael stylus and even, uh, the other stylus, um, that I received and I reviewed on the channel recently, um, you know, that machine's great, but this machine here, just from drawing on it over the past 24 hours, I posted a picture of what I did. I did a real quick creature warm up, and I did it in Photoshop. So, uh, it performs well. I mean, with the 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity, with, you know, the processor, with uh, the graphics card, it's got a uh, Intel, um, HD 620, which is an old, I mean, that's old. That's, that's all the way back to Surface Pro 5, Surface Pro, you know, 3, 4 era. Uh, I know the Iris graphics that I had my, that I have my 7, it's exponentially better, but again, you're going to run into some driver issues, but this machine performs very well. The only hang up, and this is why I say it's so close to being like the perfect all in one, um, is the pen. And, you know, you're saying, well, of course it's the pen because it has Intrig, it runs, and it doesn't. This particular machine runs Wacom AES technology. And that technology is supposed to be wonderful. You know, it's power, it's got no, no real parallax. Uh, it does have a little bit of lag, but that's whenever you draw it really fast. Um, the issue that I'm having is it doesn't have any tilt. <laughs> There's no tilt. Oh my gosh, uh, there's no tilt. I mean, they've got tilt now all the way back to Surface Pro 3 if you use the, the Pro Pen from Microsoft. I'm hoping eventually, maybe the Lenovo Yoga, you know, pen, um, next iteration of the pen will have tilt. Uh, I don't know if it's the machine or if it's the pen itself. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's maybe the pen. And, you know, with the uh, AES technology, you can't use any of the Microsoft pen protocol pens on here. So the Intrig, it, this is not Intrig. Um, and, you know, in terms of storage, you can't expand this computer to have uh, more storage and you cannot expand the memory. Um, unfortunately, everything's soldered to the motherboard. So what you get is what you get. You don't throw a fit. Uh, it does have two, um, I forget if these are fire, they're not Firewire. It's the USB-C, but it's, um, lightning ports. So these are lightning ports on the side. So they're powered, which is really cool. And then it's got your standard USB. I've got a dongle in there right now for my, uh, my XB pen remote. Um, battery life so far, it's been pretty good. I, I drew the picture today, spent about two and a half hours, three hours, and it was right at around 65%. And I figured I might get four and a half hours of heavy Photoshop use. Um, the screen is nice. I mean, it's, I think it's 1920 by 1080, so it's HD. It's not anything to write home about, uh, and it is 14 inches uh, diagonally. So what we're gonna do this morning, just because, you know, on my channel to be different, you know, I've seen some of the other guys that look at it, they tilt it, they show it, they, they draw a couple lines, and then they make the ultimate judgment on what the machine is. I don't, I don't do that. I actually sit down, I show you how the machine reacts uh, while I'm drawing, and it's real environment. Uh, you know, I might do some time lapse just because if the drawing goes a little bit more involved, then I want you guys to, you know, have to sit there and watch, you know, me draw for two hours. Uh, but anything that comes up, I will stop the uh, the video, the time lapse immediately, and I will start filming exactly what it's doing. What I've noticed so far, and and this has to do with the pen again, the button. Uh, is pre-programmed to the eraser and I can go in and say the, the button's disengaged but I actually use the button quite a bit whenever I'm drawing as the eraser but what I've noticed when I'm drawing I'm drawing I'm drawing it'll it'll turn a little bit and then my finger will hit that button and then I'm drawing a line and it'll skip and that has to do with me user user error um, so let's get into the uh, ins and outs artist review of the Lenovo yoga book 920 I hope you enjoy so I just wanted to show a really quick comparison between the iPad 12.9 and the Lenovo um, 920. You can see the Lenovo is a little bit wider, but the brightness on the iPad is much greater. So, 
Okay, so this is the machine in its folded configuration. As you saw from the little shorts that I did, that it's got three positions. One is the laptop position that's folded like a clamshell, and there's that flat position I showed. And this is the position that I utilize it in 95% of the time. Um, I, don't, I guess you would consider this the tablet. Um, <clears throat> the tablet position. Um, let's go ahead and look around here. So we'll go to what it is. Let's go to the system. Okay. So you can see it's got 1.99 gigahertz. I don't know if that's the max, but it's got eight eight processors. So that's pretty cool. Um, you know, my my HP Z book that I had had the seventh generation i7, so it had seven processors uh, that had 32 gigs of RAM, where this has eight. Um, like I said, one of the things that I've really noticed um, in this is not so much unfamiliarity. This is very familiar territory now uh, for me. You know, I've been working on Windows machines for quite a while. And much to the kind of, I don't want to say chagrin, but much to the dismay of my mental capacity um, and my patience. You know, I grew up uh, in my career doing uh, illustration and artwork on a Mac. So I went all the way from 1997 all the way until basically 2014, 2015, whenever I was finally, I don't want to say forced to go over to a PC, but I needed something that I could draw on. And at the time, the, um, the iPad really wasn't an option because the Pro, I believe, came out late 2014 or 2015, one of the two. And I just didn't have the kind of money to purchase, um, you know, an iPad Pro. So that's why I went with a Surface device. <clears throat> so we're in Photoshop. Now, you're saying, oh, is that the latest and greatest version of Photoshop? No. <laughs> and there's a reason for that. It doesn't have anything to do with the computer. It has everything to do with Photoshop. So Photoshop, unfortunately, it won't even run on my Mac anymore. Um, the latest and greatest version. I don't know what's, uh, if it's a graphics card issue, but literally it crashes the first time whenever I start it up. Uh, this machine, <coughs> it was having some issues saving. So there'll be layers and I go to save and it said, um, cannot, you know, cannot complete the operation. And then if I would hide all the layers, then I hit save, then it saved. So obviously Adobe has some work um, to do on its premiere lineup because it's really terrible that I have to deal with that particular issue um, on the latest and greatest version. So how do I have it set up <clears throat> on this machine? It's kind of similar to how I have it set up on my uh, on my Surface devices. I like to keep my cache tail size right at 128. I like to have maximum levels of cache because um, uh, that's kind of the, how the, the computer processes the information at once. And it's not really gigantic files. It's just smaller files with a lot of layers. Um, and uh, it's set at advanced, so I could probably jack it down to normal, and then I keep it right around 79 to 80 uh, percent of the RAM. If I do have issues with it stuttering or anything like that, I'll jack that RAM down or I'll adjust the virtual uh, RAM on it. So, as you see, the pressure curve is really nice, and since this is Wacom, tech, if you do the diagonal, you can see that it's steady as a rock. That's what really differentiates the Wacom from the uh, from the Intrig. So look at that diagonal, horizontal, I'm sorry, vertical and horizontal. There's no wiggle. I mean, that wiggle right there 
you can tell that it's not consistent. If you were to do the intrigue, it would go here, here, and it would be consistent like that. You would have bumps. Um, so, okay, so today I'm gonna be drawing a parrot, sort of a parrot head. Hopefully you guys like birds. I'm a huge bird guy, I don't really know why. Let me grab my other glasses really quick before I get in. Okay. So I've already been drawing today, so I'm not really in need of a warm-up, but my typical, typical warm-up involves this right here. Drawing circles. Just to get the blood flow, drawing lines, right? And you're not really seeing any breaks and it's not tapering and doing that weird kind of here and then it goes like that or it goes here and then it kind of does that at the end. That's a no bueno whenever it comes to drawing on devices like this. So let's get rid of that. Okay. Overall, like I said, I really like the machine. And I've said this more than once. I think I've said it probably 30 times, 40 times, 40,000 times. The machine is just that. It is a machine. It is here to assist or inhibit. <laughs> what do I mean by that? I mean that the machine can stop you from being creative or it can help you. The software is the same way. See, I did notice something and I'm gonna point this out. Okay, so I call it the dip in, right? It's just my own phrase. The dip in happens whenever I'm drawing, I lift to move and then I go back in. It's the dip in. So if you noticed, this area right here didn't happen. And I'd noticed it a couple times, so I'll be drawing. And, and I, don't, I don't know if it has to do with the way I draw. User error. Like that right there. See that? that? So that disappeared. Okay. So, yeah, see that just happened again. So if I take my just my hand and I bring my pen away. With the way Microsoft has done their palm rejection, it'll register a finger, but it won't draw with your finger. Unless, of course, I tell it to draw with my finger. So what, what happens, yeah, it happened again. Look at that, that's fascinating. So I'm sure it's partially my fault that it does certain things, but I think overall, it's a pretty decent machine. Like I said, I've been looking, guys, I have been looking. Eh, that's no good, that's no bueno. Okay, so I need to pull the beak down. See, I'm talking to you and I'm messing my drawing up. And this is really fanned out. It goes. So you're like, well, why don't you just wear a glove? Well, the glove screws it up. <laughs> um, I do. I, I wear a glove whenever I'm on my Mac. And that's just because, you know, whenever I'm drawing and I've got oils and stuff to get on the screen, eventually, you know, you can feel that kind of nasty so i typically wear a glove um and i misplaced my favorite glove recently so i haven't had my fave <clears throat> um the software inside you know the machines for microsoft windows it needs to detect your hand if it doesn't detect your hand then something happens it's i don't know if it's it just has to do with you know the hold on I'm trying to get this 
just the way it communicates or it's telling the computer, oh, his hand's resting on there, so now I just need to ignore all the other touches and we're just gonna focus on the pen. But I've worn a, a pen before and it, and it tend to mess me up quite a bit. So, animals. Hope you guys like drawing animals. Animals are my jam. Animal jam. That'd be a, is that a game? I don't know, animal, my daughter, is a, along with my son, are both into games, just like every other kid these days. I really regulate them um, quite a bit. Animal Crossing, that's what it is. And that was the game that my daughter really wanted for Christmas, but I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it anywhere that be able to ship it in time, you know? So she ended up getting Super Smash Brothers for her handheld device. So what you're seeing, and I'm feeling it, and I don't, again, I don't know if it's the way that I'm drawing. I don't know if it's the pen. I can't, I'd see if it's the pen, then I can't test it against another pen. See, I'm seeing breaks, little breaks. And I went in and I adjusted the pressure curve earlier. And it, it seemed to help it quite a bit. Okay, so let's go here. And you see in my drawing, what I'm doing basically is I'm getting some of those muscle areas worked in to determine where that eye needs to be. That feels pretty good. The pressure curve is really good. It's, uh, I'm see, I'm, now did you see it? A little bit of a hesitation. So again, I don't know if it has to do with the video card. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to, I really hesitate disconnecting the internet because what happens inadvertently when you disconnect the internet, Photoshop freaks out. Yeah, see, it was just about to freak out. Because what it does is it's consistently checking your license. It'll make sure that you have a valid license, which I do. I pay for a subscription for the Adobe Creative Cloud. No, I don't like that. You know, I'm not, not really having any slowdown issues. That big group of feathers goes up and it goes like that. Okay, so then we're gonna have this other Comes up, okay. And a group of feathers here. And you can hear the buttons of my XP pen remote. This little guy right here. I've pre-programmed the quick keys. Yeah, see, it's doing it. See, I can hear it, and I don't, again, oh, well, you know what it might be? No, I turned that off. Before, it was kind of hanging up uh, slightly with the um, with the cloud, with the Microsoft Cloud app. So I turned it off because I thought maybe I was having an issue there. And for those of you who, who draw a lot, you guys know what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm doing the roadmap. <laughs> so um, every drawing that you do or every, you know, whether it's a character, whether it's a creature, you know, you have your methodology uh, of what you do. Yeah, see, it's the palm rejection. It's definitely the palm rejection doing it. So I'm gonna go ahead and file, save as. Okay, excuse me, my allergies are a little wonky today bird. We're going to save that to the desktop. Photoshop. Save. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I have... Okay. I had set this all up before, but I think... Ignore touch when I'm using my pen. Yes. Show cursor. Yes. Well, let's go ahead and get rid of that. I think last time I did that, I didn't like it. But we're gonna try it anyway. I 
and that's why I didn't like it, because I can't see how big the brush is. Cast you! Okay, anyway, roadmap. So I was talking about the roadmap. So the roadmap of how you do things and how you draw, so it needs to be up, down, over, Yeah, it's doing weird things now. Okay, so I had to take a short little moment there. I had a phone call. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm doing... Anyway, roadmap. So I talked about roadmap, and that's basically whenever I'm drawing... That is, um, you know, where I'm going to put certain elements in terms of the anatomy, you know, what's going to make sense in terms of the composition, and basically it is a concept sketch. And, you know, I, I've noticed many times, you know, the older I get, the less and less I do a lot of concept work, just because I kind of already have an idea and when I'm working, I'd make those subtle adjustments here. Whoops, sorry about that. I don't know what that was. I must have hit the wrong button. Oh, that it is, okay. So the secondary button here is for the brushes. <laughs> okay. Um, and, you know, even though I might not do as much concepting, it's still necessary. You know, you're still working out things you're still doing you know you're working on the drawing as you're going yeah see that there's the dip in it's kind of hesitant I, I would say in that blink right there that has to do with Photoshop and then the pressure curve isn't working very well so let's go ahead and click on that shape dynamics yeah pen pressure it's right there minimum diameter maybe because it's so big let's try it really big no it's not working at all Look at that, no pressure. Hmm. It's working in terms of hard, soft pressure, but it's not tapering. Yeah, see if I were to turn this off, it's solid. If I were to turn this off and on. Yeah, see, something, like I'd said before, little quirks like that make me not want to use this machine you know I think it's good but is it the best no so far the best machine I've owned is going to be the ZBook the ZBook uses the Wacom tech you know it, it's it's got yeah see there's the dip in it it, it ignored the uh, pin input <clears throat> and that might be a driver issue I remember later earlier today I updated the Wacom driver yeah, and maybe it needs, you know, possibly another update. I'm not sure. Anyway, the Z book uh, that I had was the best. And you're like, well, how'd you get rid of it? Well, you know, I, I said this before. I started looking at it, and I'm like, gosh, I spent so much money on it. I don't really use it as much. I was using my Surface device because the Z book was heavy. Oh man, it was heavy, and it was it would take a while for it to start up, and I just should have stuck with it. You know, I really should have stuck with it. I really regret. Yeah, you see, even with a really big brush, you can see, and this is a pig, this is a pretty decent document. So let's do image size, a 13 by 10 at 300 DPI with a textured brush. You know, that's, that's pretty good. I mean, I don't really see a huge amount of latency. There is just a hint of latency there. So I'm working out the feathers here of what I'm going to do. I've got a color band that comes here. Then it goes into that little crease. It's, it's the palm rejection. Definitely. It's the palm rejection. And on my Z book, I could turn it off. I had it, the, the pre-programmed little keys 
the quick keys over on the right and the left, they are pre-programmed. And you just hit one of them and it turned the touch off because it knew. It's like Windows touches garbage. It is the Windows, the algorithm they use for the Windows touch, although improved, I will give it that. Overall for art, it just is terrible. It's garbage in my opinion. You know, although Surface does it pretty good, I gotta, I gotta admit, Surface does it pretty good, pretty daggum good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, he's got these underneath the skin that is exposed. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. Whoops. Okay, save. It's really quick to save too. This is the full version of Photoshop. This is not a dumbed down version. Um, you know, again, I have a subscription with the Adobe Creative Cloud, so I get the privilege of working with their wonderful products, tongue in cheek, tongue in cheek, tongue in cheek, right? For those of you who know, yeah, they don't always work the best. That's why, you know, I talked to a buddy of mine. He, um, he's also a freelancer freelance artist and he's like yeah I picked one version of Photoshop and I stuck with it he's like I think I'm on like one of the really old versions version 18 or 19 and he said it works great for me and I'm like man you're not like an early adopter and stuff he's like no <laughs> senor early adopter no I think I might I mean this is the version that is pretty stable So this is the Lenovo Yoga 920. Great overall, but just like every other all-in-one PC, it's got its quirks, and those are the quirks that you have to remember and live with. If you're okay living with those quirks, then by all means, whoops, buy one. I forget what this one, I really don't know what this one costs, to be honest with you. I'm sure you can get them used for six or $700. Again, this isn't the latest and greatest. This is, I think, 2019, 2019. Yeah, he's a handsome guy. Look at how handsome he is. He's like, hey, 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 what are you doing? I'm gonna jack that brush up really big. Let's see if we can break it. Mm, not bad. It's a 1200 pixel brush. And then it again, it did something weird at the end. Did you see it? Let's see if it does it again. Nope. Some of the other brushes I have on my Surface Pro um, 5, like that one, it, it, it chugs and chews. It's like, Oh, please don't. Don't do that to me. If you have the opportunity to get a, oops, a higher RAM configuration, I'm sure that would probably help. You know, RAM is one of those things where you can never have enough of it. It's kind of, it's designed in such a way, you know, to have the the multiple cores and and you know with the heat sinks and if your processor is doing the majority of your load then it's you're gonna notice it now on the new Mac machines I don't know they're, they're doing something wild you know I mean I've seen video of some of the lower end machines the latest M1 that had the lowest configuration run up there with the big boys of course, when you start severely tasking it and multitasking it, it fails miserably. But overall, it's a really good machine. But we're not talking about Macs today. We're talking about this machine. Whoops. And I think, you know, for the, what it is being an all-in-one, it's not gonna compare to some of those really high-end specialty machines. 
you know, like your Z-Book. I mean, your Z-Book was designed specifically for creative professionals to do a specific task. I'm not really happy. Oh, there we go. And it did it, it did it pretty well. I mean, I'm sure if I had the later version, the eighth generation, that it would have worked out really well, and I probably would have been happier with it. So what I'm going to do, just because I'm sure the majority of you care less about me talking, you want to watch me use this machine, I'm going to put it on time lapse. I'm going to move on to the next level. Go ahead and jack that down a little bit. There we go. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead on to the next level, which is finalizing the sketch and moving on to the final. It's got a nice yellow belly right here. Nice. Look at how handsome he is. <gasps> Look at him. <laughs> All right, you guys, enjoy the sketch. pressure curve uh, app that they have included with the machine and as you see I put it to its maximum sensitivity which is kind of odd because it, it just didn't work out at all so then I set it down a little bit lower and then I went back in and started messing around with it. Obviously every program is going to be different, every person is going to have a different preference and you know I ended up going back to the complete default settings before the drawing was completely done and also probably depends on the brush. You see I keep going back to it because I keep feeling it and it's just not right there. I want to default. Um, you know you got to remember this isn't walking the MR technology it's AES so the digitizer and the palm rejection uh, software is consistently working against you and you see I have a glove on that actually kind of bit me in the bum a little bit later as I was working, I had something on the glove that kept smearing onto the screen, and that was a real, you know, kind of a hassle. You know, I could definitely see why this machine came to me, because it's got its caveats whenever it comes to drawing. And, you know, I, I appreciate it, but also it, it is a frustration sometimes whenever you have a machine designed specifically for drawing, and it just doesn't work out that way. So as you see, I'll keep going back, I'll take the glove off, and at the end of the day, because every single time I kept putting my hand down, it would put a mark on the drawing, so I ended up turning touch completely off. And there was a, there's actually a separate issue that happens later on that you'll see as well. So, well, we'll get back to the drawing.
sword on my back You don't know how to act Maybe you should relax Maybe you should relapse Just kidding
Okay, so that was the video demonstration review for the Yoga Book 920. Do I think it's a good machine for drawing? I think overall it's a good machine. I think that uh, just like with any, you know, Windows machine or any kind of two-in-one, you're going to give up certain things to obtain that portability and that form factor that we're all looking for uh, as far as digital artists. I have searched high and low for that one machine that really covers and can fill in those spots uh, in my you know, in my drawing uh, repertoire that, that, you know, does everything. It's fast, it's reliable, has good battery life. The screen's really good, good storage. The price isn't too high. You know, you can find one of these, um, you know, in the marketplace, uh, whether it's refurbed or even possibly a new old stock <clears throat> for about a thousand bucks. Um, you can find them cheaper, you can find them more expensive, but for a thousand dollars, you know, what's in that price range? I did show the iPad 12.9, which brand new, that one's probably about 1200 to $1,300. And, you know, that's with the pen that's at the storage uh, spot that you want, you know, around 128 to 256 gigs. And, you know, as you've seen on other channels, you're going to see that that one mitigating factor um, that kind of inhibits you from investing in that iPad Pro, which is going to be, it runs the uh, Apple iOS and it's not a full operating system, so you can't run full apps. Now, are there great apps on the iPad? Sure. But whenever I'm sitting down and I want to do professional work or I want to sit down and I want to have a myriad of brushes and I can uh, install fonts, and I'm, and I'm sure you can do all that in, in the iPad, um, but the best, in my opinion, the best iPad app that's out there for drawing is going to be Procreate. And Procreate is a fantastic app. I use it. It's wonderful. I just think right now, at this particular point in time, uh, as it pertains to Lenovo, the Lenovo Yoga Book, uh, this particular machine is a pretty good option for drawing. The, <laughs> the stylus, um, as you heard... Uh, later on in the video started giving me some little hiccups here and there and and I don't think it's so much the machine's fault It's kind of a combination of things, you know, you have the user that's The way they draw the way they put their hands on the screen Then also, you know Photoshop having some issues and also the operating system having some issues Whenever it comes down to it you're investing in an ecosystem and the underlying hardware is going to be the same on, on a lot of these machines so if you decide, it depends on if you're brand loyal, depends on what your experience is. There's a lot of things. That's why whenever you hear a reviewer say, do I recommend this? Well, it just depends. It depends on a lot of things. There's a lot of variables and factors that really go into decision making when buying a two-in-one. And that is completely true. <laughs> I, I, I know you guys visit my channel for drawing, and that's one of the reasons why I did such a long review of this. I, I went through the video and I edited it and tried to get it down as much as I could, but there's certain information that I look for as an artist and look for as a digital artist that I really needed to know. I, I looked high and low for a digital review of the Milanovo 920 Yoga Book, and most of the time it was the uh, reviewer opening it up and unboxing and all the gloriousness that is unboxing, and then they would get and they would draw a few lines and... Uh, you know, a few characters or whatever. And and it didn't really show the ins and outs of how the machine worked. And that's why I wanted to show that in the beginning of the video. And then for those of you that like to watch a nice drawing, uh, time lapse, I did that at the end. Um, gosh, there's so many things that, that I think this machine is good at. There are so many things that I think this machine is bad at. There are, there are so many things that I think that as a user, I need as an individual and an artist that sometimes... It, again, it's hard for me to find that in all in one machine. That's why I have like three or four machines. And I, I understand that a lot of people can't do that. You know, this particular machine, again, came to me in, in such a way that I didn't have to fork out, you know, money for it. And, and that's a huge, uh, a huge factor. If I had researched this product, if I had sat down and looked at and, and watched some of the videos, and even if somebody had done a video like mine, that really showed the ins and outs, then at the end of the day, I would have determined, no, I would have not purchased this machine. It doesn't have an SD card slot. It doesn't have expansion capability. The AES technology is not the best whenever it comes to drawing. The, you know, when I was reading some of the, uh, cause I did research after there, there are some of the uh, reviews that said basically the AES and the, and the palm rejection on Lenovo is terrible. So 
if I would have read that, I would have been like, hmm, no, I'm not going to spend a thousand dollars because again, I want my machines, you know, I said this in earlier videos, I want my machines to last three to four to five years. And, and that's a big deal for me. So I don't know if this video helped anyone. Hopefully you enjoyed the painting of the parrot, which I loved. And it turned out really good. I'm not poo-pooing this machine to the point where you shouldn't give it a, you know, a possible nod or an option. It's fast. It's reliable. The battery life's pretty good. You just have to look at it as an individual artist. And sometimes, you know, you have to give up a few things whenever it comes to these two-in-ones. I think in the next like three years, the two-in-ones are going to be super fast. They're going to be awesome. The pin technology is going to come to the point where it's going to blow your mind. I think we're like three years off from a two-in-one revolution, which is going to be awesome. Or evolution, not revolution, but evolution. And whenever that time comes, you're going to see so many reviews that are going to be, gosh, it's great. It's like a, you know, it's like a muscle car era from the 60s and 70s all over again. We're in the competition and everybody's trying to get your business. And when that time comes, I think that it's going to be hard to pick a really good one. The, the evolution has already started in the tabletop uh, displays with your Huyans and your, uh, your XP pen and your Wacom and, and, you know, people or companies are chasing down that Wacom uh, quality curve and, and interface and all that other stuff. So maybe that'll happen with the two-in-ones. And gosh, if, if Apple were to ever create a two-in-one other than their iPad, which I don't think that's going to happen, that had the Apple Pencil technology and the capability in the iOS to run full apps, not just iPad apps. Man, that would blow this. They'd probably charge a billion dollars for it. So hopefully you guys uh, didn't, you know, leave because I'm so long-winded. But I want, again, I want my channel to be different. I don't want to just draw a couple lines in circles and do the little wiggle line test. I want you to see the machine in its real world working capability. It's super fast in Photoshop. Uh, it, it was super fast in some of the other programs I used that I didn't do a demo because I, I wanted to have continuity. Maybe I'll do a demo in ZBrush, right? Uh, maybe I'll do a demo in Clip Studio Paint. Those are going to be similar uh, in terms of um, just, uh, I think, capability on the machine. Um, you know, ZBrush doesn't even use the uh, processing power. It, it, it uses the RAM. So the pixel, or not the pixel, but the uh, polygon count is limited by the amount of RAM you have. So do I think I could do some really high res sculpts on here? Probably not. We'll see. I, I think that, uh, you know, that might be a video for another day. So thank you guys for visiting the channel. Hopefully you got something today and definitely lick, click the lick. I want you to lick the subscribe button. <laughs> Just kidding. Click the subscribe button and uh, give me a thumbs up if you like it. And definitely there's more videos on the channel and other reviews that you can see. Thank you guys and have a happy new year.